a look at earnings in Hong Kong's Shanghai Hotels, which operates the Peninsula chain of hotels, reported a 6% increase in its revenue in 2011. I and mean, that, of course, being affected by a string of natural disasters in Japan and Thailand. So let's take a look at the way forward. And joining us this morning, Chief Executive Officer Clement Kwok joins us on the program. Good, Good morning, morning, Susan. Good Monday to you, Clement. So there you go. As you said, it could have been a better, I guess, uh, bottom line year if it wasn't for those uh, disasters that we saw in Thailand and also Japan. Indeed, Susan. Um, after the uh, earthquake occurred in Japan, our business was very much hit. And of course, we operate a relatively small number of hotels. As you know, the peninsula focuses on a small number of hotels yeah. that we own and operate. So our financial exposure to each hotel yeah. is relatively much larger than many of our competitors. How much do you think the earthquake cost you? How much do you think the flooding in Thailand cost you? Well, what I would say to you is that our underlying earnings for last year went up by 14% as it was. If we hadn't had Tokyo and Thailand, yeah. uh, the disasters there, the underlying earnings would have gone up by a significant percentage. Okay, yeah. you're still handing out a dividend of 10, 10 cents uh, each. Uh, do, you, do you want to do that, considering mm -hmm. that you have repair work to do in Tokyo and also, I'm sure, in Thailand as well? Well, we normally pay out a certain percentage of our earnings by way of dividend. And what we're paying out is in line with the range that we would normally have, mm -hmm. is at the top end of the range to reflect a degree of optimism that we're now feeling about the current trends that we're seeing right. and the outlook for the immediate future. Oh, wow. So you sound pretty buoyant then. <laughs> so what's going on for uh, Peninsula Hotels? Are you seeing good business? Uh, is business back to normal in Japan, back to normal in yeah. Thailand? Well, for Japan, the business levels are back to more or less where they were before the earthquake. Okay, that's good. But unfortunately, Japan was weak even before the earthquake came along. And of course, the strong yen doesn't help our business because foreigners find it more expensive to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. But generally across the board, we are seeing some stronger trends right now. Yeah. And in particular, as you know, Hong Kong has remained a strong market. Right. However, we do have the Hong Kong Peninsula under re renovation in the coming year. Mm -hmm. um, there will be some impact on earnings for that, but we will end up with a better product in Hong Kong by yeah. the end of the renovation. Okay. Well, and what about Thailand itself? Have you swept away all the floodwaters? <laughs> Everything's back to normal? Operation is... Uh, yeah, the hotel was physically not affected by the floods. <laughs> But it was just that the number of visitors, of course, declined dramatically yes. after the floods. Again, we're seeing a recovery in that already. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Thailand remains a very attractive destination. Yeah. Now, also talk to me about the recovery that you're seeing in the U.S. You're seeing that you saw pretty good signs of recovery at the mm -hmm. peninsula in New York mm -hmm. and also the peninsula of Beverly Hills as well, mm -hmm. which feeds into this recovery theme mm -hmm. that we're seeing in the U.S. I think the difference between New York and Beverly Hills, and we did not see as much recovery in Chicago, is that there is more international business going to New York and Beverly Hills. So we were seeing a pickup in business from the Middle East and from other countries, whereas Chicago is more dependent on domestic U.S. business, mm -hmm. and we didn't see as much of a recovery there. But again, you know, signs are generally still not too bad at the moment okay. for our business. And what about also in, uh, in Europe as well? I know you've got a few hotels there dotted across the Eurozone. Well, at the moment, um, we're building our first hotel in uh, Europe, mm -hmm. which is in Paris. And the hotel will open next year. That's it's going schedule? to be, it's on schedule. It's okay. a beautiful hotel in um, a very majestic grand old building. Okay. And we'll start operating in Europe from next year. Well, it's not like it's, it's Versailles, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure you'll build it in that manner. Um, <laughs> Clement, uh, let's also talk about China because I know you have yeah. a few hotels in uh, Beijing. Also, Shanghai, Shanghai I think, is yes. open, has opened its doors. Shanghai opened about two years yeah. ago. And, yeah. And how, how are they performing? Because we keep talking about it, a slowdown in China. Yeah. Are you seeing that at all? Concerns about the economy for your business? Um, well, generally in China at the moment, there's a lot of supply because a lot of people want to enter the China market and a lot of people have built hotels. Yeah. But despite that, we are seeing a steady increase in demand in China. Now, in the short term, we'll have to work through some of the oversupply. Mm -hmm. But in the long term, I think it's going to be quality that's going to make the difference. The Chinese are bec becoming very discerning yeah. you know, hotel customers. And hopefully, by offering the best product, the prospects will be good. Yeah, and no shark fin on the uh, Chinese no restaurant. Shark fin. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> Taking it off. Clement, uh, good to see you. Thank yeah. you for that.